so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the difference between the, you guys had the premiere on Sunday, and yeah. then you guys had another showing last night, and the audience like, took it in really well last night. Yeah. And from what I heard from the premiere, it was a little bit of a mixed reaction. Do you have yeah. any... Well, you know, I, th I think awesome. it, was a, yeah, it was a combination of elements. Number one, the, the premiere was at, you know, at one in the afternoon on a Sunday, you know, after everybody had been out yeah. all night. And last night was, you know, nine o'clock, which is a good hour, and that people come in, you know, nice and oiled up. And, and uh, you know, and also then, uh, because of the premiere, then there was reviews about it that sort of described what you're walking into. Before that, I think, you know, I mean, it, yeah, they didn't know what to expect. I mean, we, we made our, our, our synopsis as vague as possible, you know what I mean, and almost read like a, like a, some kind of romantic comedy. So I think, you know, a lot of people came in expecting I don't know what, and then once they saw what they were getting, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, the synopsis or nothing on South by Southwest even mentions that it's a film all in Spanish. So. Even just that for a person walking in who just the film comes on and they're like, I'm not gonna sit here and read subtitles, you know. <laughs> that's uh, that's an element too, you know. And so and last night was it had a lot more Latinos, you know. So a lot more people who, who understand the sense of humor and, and who are getting the the jokes that are always gonna be lost in trans in translation, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you mentioned the film like marketing as a romantic comedy, but it takes on many genres. There's so yeah. many different stories in the fold throughout. What would you categorize it as? If I, you were to, I do you think it, you could stick it in a box as a genre, or how would you describe it? I, I mean, it's definitely, it's, I mean, it's definitely the genre of you know, uh, it's a satire. I would say it's a savage satire. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an extremely dark comedy, but it's, it's still, you know, it's taking on uh, heavy themes, but you know, doing them through through humor and through irony. Because if you made a film, you know, I keep getting asked that why satire, why satire. It's like if you make a film about these type of themes without comedy, without that balance, then it's just like it's just a mean film. You know what I mean? It's just altogether mean and dismal and like just bleak. And like that's not that's not my take on life. Like yeah, you know it's a crazy world we live in and everything else. But there's you know there, there's beauty too and there's humor and the, you know what I mean. And even the most depressed person finds something to laugh about, even if it's someone else's misfortune. <laughs> you know. I mean, one element of the film that really made it, you know, this bright emotion aside from all the dark elements that are going on is the music right what right. was like can you talk a little bit about yeah, you know, same thing, sort of wanted to juxtapose all the heavy imagery and, and you know, and, and that also made it clear that it's irony and that it's satire, you know, and, and, uh, and just a good juxtaposition of, of lighthearted music, you know, to, 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 to remind you what you're looking at and why you're looking at it, you know, if, if you know, if you can humor the idea, you know, and, and there's people who walk out and that's cool too, like I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, sort of jargon amongst filmmakers and musicians, you'll often hear them say like, going into a festival or going into play in a town, they'll be like, we're gonna rule this town, we're gonna slay, we're gonna, they talk like this, you know, is it, that's not my scene, like, I, I, I'm not here to dominate anything or rule anything, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to open a, a, you know, a conversation up, you know, and, and so it's someone's perfectly God-given right to not to want to be part of that conversation, you know, just like I can decide what conversations I want to be a part of, you know, so, so when you take out, you know, sort of conquest and colonial mentality out of it, then it just becomes a whole different thing and you can enjoy it a lot better, you know. The, the main conversation I wanted to have with you about the film that I took back was the commentary on the male psyches, so yeah. I thought it would be really great if you could talk a little bit about, you know. The male psyche? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think uh, with the know, limited time that we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then I'll make it short. Uh, a, a wonderful feminist once said, e "Every man is a potential rapist." So you know, th the point being that y you have to talk in very specific and bold colors in order to get anyone to actually listen to what you're saying. And so, like from the moment you're from the moment we're born, well, the very first issue is whether your mother loves you or not. So as you're uh, as you're in your mother's stomach, you feel whether or not she wanted this baby or whether she loves this baby or not. The second one, when you come out, is when the doctor says it's a girl or it's a boy. That's already like a whole slew of like social implications, you know, and things that are just placed on us by, you know, by again by conquest, by 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 this slave mentality, you know, uh, uh, that was put here by, you know, we by by men and by male. You know, all our doctrine is given to us by males. You know, even um, even wonderful. Uh, beautiful poetic books like uh, the, like the Quran, the Kabilian, the Bible. You know, they they were all passed down through oral tradition by men, put down to ink by men, with men looking over those other men's shoulders, and they don't have the the, the woman in mind at all. You know, and so, you know, 
obviously we could read about this in Fromm's work or in Jung's work and plenty of people have written about it but it's like you know when, when man realized a long long time ago that he couldn't sustain life he had no other option but then to destroy so, so he couldn't create you know so the first thing he did is what you do you see it you see it on many different levels just you know in the workplace you see so people see someone who's talented they're like okay i'm gonna keep him down you know what i mean because it means that i can i can get further in the workplace you know so if, if, if you take that very simple context and that very simple example and put it into existence as a whole man saw a woman and he said i'm gonna put my foot down on her you know and make sure that she knows she's underneath me yeah she can produce life but she ain't gonna be nothing without me and so i'm gonna go I'm gonna go create warfare. I'm gonna dominate other cultures. I'm gonna destroy, take over land. I'm gonna build. You know, I'm gonna keep building and building and building. But I can't. Right. I can't sustain life. No matter how much I, you know, a man destroys. No matter how many phallic temples he creates, he can't sustain life. Like that's that is all will always eat at the psyche of man, and 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 is the cause. You know, one of many causes. You know, for for exploitation. You know, the exploitation of women. I mean. We, this is the society we live in. Anyone who wants to deny themselves of that, just look at advertising. You know, I have to make a conscious effort not to not to um, not to be, be aware of advertising. Like, as soon, because your eyes just go to it and they stick there. And I make a conscious effort when I go anywhere, especially metropolis, big city, is like to 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 be focused in the real world and to not look up at advertising. And you know, if you want to sell a car or or, or a book or a piece of bread if you put a woman in a bikini you know it's like yeah, this sort right. of exploitation exactly. so it's like you know that th there's those of us luckily you know who have chosen to take on a different dialogue you know and a different uh, way of living and have chosen to so really there's another big point about the film is to really e examine a vernacular you know because right, that's that yeah that, that's that's the way that, that the people who sort of set up the system that's the way they keep it perpetual is vernacular, you know, it, it, it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's a, vernacular, no, it, it's, it, it happens uh, every day and people don't even understand where it's coming from. Was that your main inspiration behind, behind the film? Uh, yeah, my main inspiration will be my mother, you know, yeah, my main, my main inspiration is my mother. Uh, the very first line of the film that I wrote, which didn't make it to the film, but we put on the poster is, El que no critica su cultura no ama su madre, which means, if you don't critique your culture, you don't love your mother. You know, so so for me, that's the that's the that was the, the biggest inspiration. Second to that is uh, my favorite uh, Albert Einstein quote, which is, uh, "If you want your children to to be smart, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be even smarter, you read them more fairy tales." So. That's interesting. Oh. And your mom's seen the film. Yeah, yeah, she, she loves it. She loves it. Yeah, yeah, she gets it. You know, mm -hmm. my father gets it. You know, I I grew up in in a in a in a very great progressive household with a lot of. Uh, lot of conversation always about everything almost to a to an annoying extent you know so, so but I'm grateful for it now you know once you get out of those teenage years you know you can really appreciate your, your parents a whole lot more and, and, and you know everything they they gave you you know definitely, definitely. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're working on on next film-wise oh sure yeah we're, we're working on, on, on a script now hopefully that will get made uh, in, in fall called uh, Nino y Esperanza, Nino and Esperanza. Um, it's, uh, I, I wanted to write a, a, a typical barrio film and, uh, and then sort of take it and, and flip it on its head and, and uh, just sort of do it my way. So that, that's, a, you know, that's about as the best explanation I could give about that right you know, now. I asked because I, I saw your previous film, Sentimental Engine Slayer, and then yeah. going into this last night, it's two totally different films and I, I love that because it shows how much strength you have as a director and the different visions you have, but they, they do also tackle the same ideas the at same the same time. Yeah, so. yeah uh, anything I, uh, thank you first of all for the compliment, and, and then uh, what I wanna add is just, uh, you know, definitely like that's what I try to explain to people who go to the film is like, hey, this was this was one color, this was one mood. You know, my other films, our other films aren't like that. You know, they're, they're all different. Although in saying that, every expressive person has con conceptual continuity. The the themes are the same. You know why? Because I'm my mother's son, and because I've lived life through through her eyes and through my eyes and through my my placement in so in society. You know, and so therefore the themes, the questions that I have. Uh, you know, and the things that I'm I, I'm bringing into discussion are always going to be the same, and they're just going to be they're just going to use different colors. You know, because it, you know we all know the cliche saying you know every every answer just leads you to more questions and more questions. So it's you know I don't know that there's an end to that. You know, but uh, but I have to find something to do with my time. So 
Yeah. So that's it, you know. Yeah. And I just one more question. I just want to ask who who your influences are as far as on making these films because both of the films have time period pieces. Too. Yeah. Um, geez. Yeah. My influ again. My influences. My biggest influence would be would be my 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 parents without a doubt, and then people like like Einstein or people like Frederick Douglass, you know, um, or Elijah P. Lovejoy, you know, who printed the first abolitionist uh, newspaper, um, and and just sort of in general, or, or you know, to, to be to be have something more tangible uh, as like directors or something. It would be someone like Fassbender, you know, this this uh, this this overweight homosexual in Germany in, in post-war Germany, you know, making films about things that mattered to him. You know, and so I, I just think that uh, for, for me, the path is uh, uh, per personal. It has to be personal. There, there, there's two paths that you could take as an expressive person, and both are completely valid. Uh, there, there's the personal path, and there's entertainment. You know, and so and some people achieve a very hard thing, which is a perfect balance of both. You know, I, 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 I don't have the skills to do that yet. Maybe one day, yes. But right now, my path is that of, of you know, of of, of the pers personal expression and, and anything that gets in the way of that I have to treat like a dagger pointed at my heart you know? I appreciate that yeah. cool. cool thanks I guess that's yeah that's about it unless you wanted to, to touch on anything else oh no that's if you have any questions yeah I just okay. <laughs> I'm like a puppet if there's a question then I can pull the <laughs> string and then something comes out but left to my own devices I just like okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you want to touch like I mean just like for bonus, like extra footage, um, totally separate, like as far as music, and you're reuniting and playing Coachella. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, are you excited to be? Um, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Again, it's a, a process is the most important thing, and so like that, that music is a is a byproduct of the chemistry between those five people. You know, between me and those four guys, and those guys and me, and and like a. a you know, that's the music really is our, is our interpersonal relationships. Again, like everything has to be personal. Sure. If not, it just, it just isn't worth my time. Okay. You know what I mean? It, it would be like me doing this interview and not looking at you in the eyes, just like looking at the camera the whole time while I do it. You know what I mean? Like, which some people do. You've seen the interview. I've, from, I've been there. So some people do that, yeah. So like everything ha has to be personal, you know? So mm -hmm. like that's exciting because it's a relationship that I get to, to revisit through, 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 hopefully much more mature eyes you know because yeah. this was 11 years ago now you know and so we, we, we've all grown and we have a, a perspective and things are more, more like a lot more lighthearted and so we're able to you know to look at that time period and and now and 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 add something to it you know so that's that's a really amazing opportunity that not a lot of people get yeah so so for you know for that i'm really grateful you know you know <laughs> cool yeah, that's it, yeah. okay cool cool all right, cool. Okay. <laughs> cool.